Hey y'all, we're on lesson nine for Algebra One, but before we get into um, doing what we're doing today, pause this and go ahead and let's answer those five questions and let's get a little warm ups into what we were doing last time. So pause it and do it. Okay, let's answer these. The absolute value of negative 15, how far away is negative 15 from zero? It's 15, all right? Now let's talk about the opposite of this. 13 minus six is seven, the absolute value of seven is seven. The opposite of that, however, is negative seven. All right, number three, immediately you should make sure that you know that the method that you have when you add two numbers together that are opposite signs is you, in your brain, you take them at the absolute values and subtract. So when you see negative six plus negative, excuse me, positive six plus negative eight, your first action should be eight minus six. Okay, the answer to that is two. What sign is two? Well, which one of these numbers is farther away from zero? In other words, has the greater absolute value. It's negative eight, so that means this is negative two. Okay, four, uh, we can, you know, uh, the easiest way probably is, is going left to right, although, although you can clump together all the, uh, each, you know, a number that has the same, all the numbers that have the same sign if you want to, but let's just go left to right. Okay, the rule is if you have two numbers that have the same sign, you simply take their absolute values and add them, which give you absolute value of five, absolute value of four is, five plus four is nine. And then you take the sign of the number that the bo they both are. So negative nine plus positive 12, or you could just write negative nine plus 12, okay? Now we're in a situation where you have two numbers that are op opposite, you know, opposite signs. So immediately you go, okay, absolute values, 12 and nine. 12 min minus nine is three. Should that be negative three or positive three? Well, which one of these, this or this, has the greater absolute value? The answer is that, so the answer is positive three. Okay, last one. Let's go left to right. Negative three plus positive seven. Opposite signs, immediately you go seven minus three, four. Should it be positive four or negative four? That is farther away from zero. That makes this positive four. Now we have four plus a negative four. Okay, well, again, we have the same thing, right? Opposite signed, uh, well, excuse me. Yeah, we have opposite signed numbers, so we're going to subtract the absolute values. Four minus four is zero, that's all you need to do, done. Okay, all right, let's make sure you know those. Okay, let's take a look at something different today. The other two operations, uh, and we're gonna multiply and divide today. So again, I, want, I cannot emphasize how critically important it is for you to be able to uh, divide, uh, subtract, add, and multiply signed numbers. It is absolutely critical that you know how to do this. And again, if you're still slow on seven times eight and 12 times four and you know uh, nine times six and things like that, you need to sharpen those up immediately. Like, I mean, like every day. That'll help you probably as much or more than anything else that you do getting super fast at knowing those multiplication tables and division tables. And you, you should know six plus seven immediately. You should know 14 minus eight immediately. 15 minus seven immediately. 12 minus five immediately. I mean, no hesitation, not 12 minus five. Wait, that's gonna be, no, that will work. Cause you're gonna have to go 12 minus seven immediately. So you can go seven minus 12 immediately. Cause you, after a while of doing this, you're gonna go seven minus 12, negative five, right in your head. So and that's what you're that's what you're going to want to be able to do because when you're doing formulas and quadratic equations and all these stuff later on you don't want to be messing taking any time to sitting there going okay wait eleven times seven okay wait eight times four hold on I know that no you have to just know them perfectly so anyway work on that do timed worksheets if you need to to sharpen yourself up it'll I promise you it'll uh, it'll make things much easier if you're struggling with those. Anyway, let's go to multiplication. What does five times seven mean? We all know what it means, right? It actually means, it's just a shorthand way. Nobody wants to go around doing this. Uh, let's see here, uh, you know, I got, uh, you know, seven kids are coming to the ball game. It costs $5 a piece. Let me figure this out. Uh, 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 okay, five, no, okay. Nobody wants to write that. It's too time consuming and having to count on that jazz, forget it. We know five times seven means that five is there seven times. Of course, it could also mean this, seven is there five times. Doesn't matter which one, which one of those you do. So totally fine. Let's go through some actual logical steps here and you'll see something interesting happen, okay? First off, let's do this. 
All right, let's do it together. Ready? Okay, three times two. And this would be very interesting for you to write down if you want to. Okay, that's six, of course. Three times one, 31. No, I'm just kidding. It's just three. Okay, three times zero, three, oh, excuse me, zero. Okay. All right, what's, what's happening with the number each time all the way on this side? It's going down by one, right? Okay, what's happening to the answer on the right side? It's going down by three, right? So even if you didn't know what in the world three times negative one was, you could logically follow the pattern and go, well, it's you know down three from zero, so that's negative three, and that's going to be you know down three again. That'll be negative six, and then that'll be neg up negative nine, and so on. Okay, but you can understand though, what this means, right? If somebody says to you uh, three times two, well, you know what that means, like right? that's like a three and a three and a three, or excuse me, two threes, right? Or three twos, a two and a two and a two. Okay, so you could even understand what this means, right? Three times negative one. That means you have a negative one sitting there. There's another negative one sitting there, and there's another negative one sitting there as well, right? There's three of them, right? Well, what's negative one minus one minus one? That's negative one, that's negative two, that's negative three. So there's your answer. That makes sense, right? That's logical sense. You can visualize that. You can even visualize three times negative three. That means you can go, okay, there's one of those, there's another one of those, and there's another one of those. Three of something, you know, three clowns, three manhole covers, three, you know, shoes, whatever. There it is, okay? How about this one over here on the right side? Now, here's what we're going to do on this one. This is weird. On this side, we're going to go down every time, okay? So logically, we kind of already know what the answer to this is, right? Three times negative three. That means, you know, three negative threes sitting there right next to each other, right? Okay, so the answer to that is negative nine. Two negative threes, that's gonna be negative six, right? Just one negative three is gonna be negative three. Zero negative threes will be zero, right? Okay, well that makes logical sense. Now you can tell me, look, look at this, what's happening to the answer each time on the right? If I go from negative nine to negative six to negative three to zero, so it looks like on the number line we're going up three each time, right? Okay. So, now look at this next one. Now again, I just wanna point out, when somebody says to you, what's two times negative three, you can visualize that, right? Here's a negative three, here's a negative three, there's two of them that'll make negative six. You can visualize what that means, right? You, you can visualize two of something, two dollars, two thumbnails, two, you know, uh, horses or whatever, okay? Now this, how in the world do we visualize this? Hey Charlie, how many horses do we have in the race today? Uh, negative one. What does that mean? How much money you got? Uh, negative one dollars. How are you gonna multiply that? What in the world does that mean? But we can look at the pattern and go, look, we have a pattern. Three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two. That follows a pattern, right? Look at this over here, the neg negative nine, negative six, negative three, zero. What's the next number in the pattern, logically? We're going up each time three, right? So this will be three, negative one, times negative three is positive three. Negative two times negative three logically is positive six, right? Now, to explain that, I have no idea. You know, that's not something you can exactly visualize very easily, right? You can look at this and go, oh yeah, I have two horses, two, you know, uh, cell phones, two, uh, you know, uh, pads of paper, two cheese sandwiches, and I can have two negative threes, and I can go, yeah, two negative threes together gives me negative six. But how do you go, uh, hey, how many pads of paper did you bring with you? I brought negative two. What in the world? Anyway, but well, we have to conclude that logically the pattern develops. So this is what you need to know. So if you don't need to write this down, go ahead and write it down. If two factors, factors are numbers that are multiplied together, of course, if they have the same sign, the product is positive. We already know that, you know, seven times five is 35. Those are both positive numbers. We know the answer is positive. We memorized those, I hope, many years ago when you were much smaller, okay? But because uh, of the logical steps that we just took, we proved that this is logically, you know, correct. We can say also negative five times a negative seven is also 35 as well, okay? So this, the other one is, the other part of this is if two factors have the opposite sign then the product is negative. So if you need to write that down, go ahead and write it down. We've already seen examples of this, right? If two numbers have the opposite sign, there's a positive, there's a negative, right? Then the answer is negative, okay? That's all you need to remember. 
And uh, let's look at a couple of these, all right? So negative five times negative four, how do you visualize? You know, hey, how many horses do you have? Uh, negative five of them. No idea how to visualize that. How do you multiply those? We don't care. We know that both of those terms are negative. If the term, the, excuse me, if the signs of the factor is the same, the answer is positive. Three times negative two, those are opposite signs, so the answer is negative. Negative seven times eight, those are also opposite signs, so the answer is also negative. 12 times negative six, well, 12 times six is 72. Those signs are opposites, the answer is also negative, all right? Uh, let's do inverse operations very quickly. A definition of an inverse operation means just like the opposite. Like addition undoes uh, subtraction. Multiplication undoes division and so on. So we don't have to show any examples. You, I'm not sure you guys know that pretty well. If you do 56 divided by 8, ex pretend you had to explain this to a little brother or sister. How would you do it? 56 divided by 8. The kid comes to you and says, explain to me what 56 divided by 8 means. You go, shut up! Leave me alone. I'm going to okay, don't do that. Just very nicely uh, explain what 56 divided by 8 means. Okay, that means basically you say, come here, 56 divided by 8. I mean, here, bring me 56 of your dollars. And now we're going to put them in eight piles in my room. And look, each pile has $7 in it. Okay, now you can go back to your room. No, 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 wait, no, you played the game. These are my dollars now. And he'll remember that when he's 35 years old and you're 40 and, you know, disown you or take you out of his will or something anyway. Well, let's look at this. What does division mean? We know what it means. How many times does this fit into that, right? Six divided by two. And again, we're going to go down by twos each time in this column. We're going to stay the same here. I'm going to watch what happens. Six divided by two is three. Four divided by two is two, right? And that makes sense, right? How many twos go into four? Well, of course, the answer is two of them do, right? How many twos go into two? One. How many twos go into zero? Zero. How many twos go into negative two? Even that is okay, right? I mean, you can go to negative two, and you can go, that's almost like saying you owe somebody two dollars. And you know, if you can divide by two, that means you owe the person one dollar, and you owe the person another dollar. So the answer to that is just negative one. This one, negative four divided by two. In other words, cut negative four in half, which is what dividing by two means, and you get the answer is negative two. And that's logical and sensible, right? Okay, this is where it gets weird, just like the last uh, time we did this, okay? Even this is sensible, right? Okay, you could say, for example, um, and we're gonna, go, we're gonna go up five each time here. We're gonna go up five, we're gonna stay the same here. Okay, but look, it's negative 15 degrees. Ooh, uh, gee, uh, you know, this morning it went down five degrees several times. I wonder how many times it went from zero degrees. Well, it went one time, that was negative five, and it went two times, it went down to negative 10, and it went three times, it went down to negative 15 degrees. So negative five fits into negative 15 three times, right? That's logically sensible, right? Okay, how many times does negative five fit into negative 10? Twice, right? I mean, you can split negative 10 into five pieces, and, and, and do, how many, excuse me, how many negative fives will go into negative 10? And the answer is two of them go, right? Because there's one that goes, and there's another one that goes, and negative 5 minus 5 is negative 10, okay? Negative 5 divided by negative 5, 1 goes in. Uh, 0 divided by negative 5 is 0. Now here's where it gets weird. This is where it gets weird. How many negative 5s fit into positive 5? How do you fit a negative number into a positive number? This is sensible, because you can plot three of them together, you know, in other words, multiply by three and get that answer. This is why the quotient is three. But this, five divided by negative five? What in the world? But we can see that we're following a pattern. We're going up by five every time. This stays the same, and the answer is getting uh, lower each time. So three, two, one, zero, and then negative one, right? And the same thing is true here. So it doesn't make a lot of like practical, you know, everyday sense. But we have to conclude then, based on this logical pattern, that 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. Okay? So in other words, division rule is the same thing as the multiplication rule. Okay? The rule one is, if two numbers have the same sign, the quotient is positive. If two numbers have the opposite sign, the quotient is negative. If you need to write this down, go ahead and pause it right now. But you can remember multiplying and dividing all as one big clump. 
If you have two numbers, you're multiplying them or you're dividing them. In their opposite signs, the answer is negative. If they're the same sign, in other words, they're both negative or they're both positive, the answer is positive. And that's it. So let's do a couple of these. All right? Negative 6 divided by 2. In other words, you cut negative 6 in half. What do you get? Negative 3, right? And negative divided by a positive is a negative. Negative 16 divided by 4. If you cut negative 16 into 4 chunks, what would each chunk be? It would be negative 4, right? Okay. 35 divided by negative 7. I mean, logically, well, does this make sense? How many negative 7s can fit into 35? It's not exactly, you know, something that comes easy to us. But because of our rule, we have to say opposite signs, the answer will be negative, and we know 35 divided by 7 is 5. And the same thing is true for this. A positive divided by a negative, opposite sign, the answer is negative, it's going to be negative 4. All right, let's try another group. Negative 12 divided by 4, that's logical. If you cut negative 12 into 4, into four pieces, you would get negative 3 each piece, right? 4 negative 3 pieces would give you negative 12, okay? What about that one? How many negative 3s fit into negative 15? Well, the answer is 5, right? Because if you lined up 5 negative 3s in a row, you would add them together and get negative 15. So the answer to this is positive. The same sign, so that means it's positive, okay? 25 divided by negative 5, opposite signs, so the answer is negative. 84 divided by 7, of course, those are both positives, so the answer is positive as well, okay? All right, last one, pause it and you try. Go ahead and pause it and try these four. Okay, a negative divided by a positive, these are opposite signs, so the answer is negative. These are the same sign, so the answer is positive. Opposite signs, so the answer is negative. Opposite sign, so the answer is negative again. There we go, okay? So, just again, to make sure, um, if you are multiplying or dividing, if the factors, uh, you know, the numbers you're multiplying together are they the same sign? Or if the numbers you're dividing are the same sign, the answer is positive. If they're opposite signs, the answer is negative every single time. Okay, all right, that's the meat and potatoes. You gotta make sure you know that because in a, in a while, you're gonna wanna make sure you've already got this down and you're focusing on something else. It's like learning how to read. You don't wanna sit there and think about, hmm, B says B. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see, now let's see. A says, ah, and then do the entire word basketball or something like that. That could take you two hours to read one word. Forget that stuff. Know these things and get them out of there as fast as you can so you can go on to the other stuff. All right. Okay. Practice set. Go ahead and try. You know what? Try all of them. Go ahead and pause the entire thing and I'll go through all the answers together at one time. Okay. All right. Pause it and give them a shot. Okay. A is negative eight. B, negative six. C is negative 12, D is 15, E is positive 2, F is negative 2, so there are opposites there, G is negative 2 as well, and H is 8. Okay, you guys have a great day. Do a good job on those practice, like the problem set today. Knock those out, and we'll do some more tomorrow too. So, see ya.